You know how over the last year or so we're always 3D printing parts and upgrades and cool inventions for our RC planes and other RC things? What if I told you there's a machine that can carve aluminum, carbon fiber, and wood right on your desk? This is the Makara Carvera Air and it might have just changed the hobby forever. We've been 3D printing for almost a year now. It's been awesome for customizing our planes, cars, drones, and boats, but let's be real, sometimes you want parts that are stronger, smoother, or just look more professional. That is where a CNC like this can come in. Now the cool thing is it's actually a bit smaller than I expected because it is literally a tabletop machine. The footprint and the form factor of this would be extremely comparable to most of my 3D printers. As a matter of fact, future plans are to have a 3D printer sitting right by this and they will be here working on kind of custom things for me, inventions or ideas that I have, rather than just printing things for other people and selling them on Etsy or whatever. That's kind of where my machines back here are working on. The CNC plus new future 3D printer will be working on new inventions or more specific parts for things that I want to bring to life. The cool thing about the Makara Carvera Air is that it is like the 3D printer of the CNC world. It literally is just plug it in and it starts working. There's very, very little building that has to be done. As a matter of fact, more than anything is just learning the process of bringing something to life. There's a bit of a difference to having to take a block of material, knowing the dimensions with your calipers, putting this into the cutting board here, and then putting those dimensions into the software so it knows very specifically how big is the material and what type of material is it working with. One of the most impressive features of this machine is its ability to self-level like basically any of our advanced 3D printers do. You have this little probe that is on the side of the machine and it's very easy to do tool head changes. You pull this lever down, you install the probe in the bottom, you press go and the machine does its magic. It works around to make sure, you might think you have a perfectly level piece of wood, but there's actually small waves in that and this probe process will detect those differences and make adjustments for that. For example, the little flag that I made, I didn't set the probe. I assumed that piece of wood was perfectly, you know, perfect, uh, but it's not. And so some of the stripes didn't show up very well on that, but the stars were cut absolutely perfect because they were a bit deeper of a cut. It's just nice that they thought about the beginner. There is a very small learning curve to this process, but once you get that down, just like anything in life, it becomes very easy to repeat. All right, very cool. This is a neat little feature. Blinks up here. One blink means tool one. I think that seems to be a good assumption. Two lights were blinking earlier for change to tool two. Change over to tool one again. I just want to see the detail of those cuts. That's going to be so cool. I wanted to see if this could make real RC parts. So I designed a few test pieces. I did focus on something that I thought would be easier, which would be servo arms. And my very first cutout that I did with this machine was this micro servo arm. I did a fantastic job cutting it out, but it only had two dimensions. And that was something that I was missing in the software process of these steps. So with a bit of patience, I was finally able to print this giant servo arm that does actually utilize three dimensions where we have different depths that are being cut into this and it's more of a multi-step process with a couple different sized bits. It's kind of a, <laughs> a little goofy seeing me hold this giant servo arm that's actually almost half the size of this biplane here, but to really show you guys what it's capable of, it could cut something out even four times as big as this. It's just cool to know that if you have a giant gas plane that's $10,000 that you're out there flying or a buddy of yours and you crash it, now with this machine, you have the ability to make spare parts and keep that awesome plane flying. Normally, I'd have tried to 3D print something like this, but today we're carving them out 
of literally a carving board. That was uh, just a junk carving board, uh, which is why it's kind of miscolored and stuff on, on the surfaces. I could sand that down and just pretty it right up. So far I've been very impressed with the detail and precision this thing pulls off. It's absolutely insane because you would think that a spinning bit would just throw chunks around and have no control, but when you put the right sized bit on there, it can have such smooth surfaces that you think they came out of a resin 3D printer or something after they've gone through a smoothening process. I've been extremely impressed with its ability to have smooth cut results. One thing that I've been very impressed with on this machine is its sound or lack thereof. Here's an example of sound. When this is fully running, the bit is running, the machine is running, the only thing that's not on is the vacuum, which is extremely loud. When you have that covered, it's very quiet. It's cutting right now too. And for comparison's sake, the printer, X1C, it's a little bit loud. Yeah, these are quiet machines though. Processor running. Let's see what we're cutting in there. And then again, even though this is a CNC, it's quiet. Here's the sound under the hood. It's a tiny bit doing tiny cuts. But when you have this hood closed and it is running, you almost can't hear it other than just maybe a bit of vibration. It's very quiet while it's running. And most of the time, I think my 3D printers, which you can probably hear in the background, uh, one of them anyway, is running now, tend to be louder and they're nice quiet machines, nothing against them, but this seems to run even quieter than those. For me, this is where the hobby of RC gets 10 times more fun because the Carvera Air lets you experiment with new ideas, lighter or different uh, materials of control horns. We can do custom motor mounts or even carbon landing gear with this. So if we have a favorite plane and we wanna take it to the next level and upgrade it, or we're just repairing broken parts after the inevitable crash, we can utilize the CNC machine by Carvera Air and these 3D printers and just take it to the next level and bring things to life or repair and upgrade our favorite things, which just it just makes just makes me so happy. I fully plan to start 3D printing some planes. Not every material for that RC plane am I going to want to make out of PLA or uh, lightweight PLA for planes. I'm gonna to wanna to be able to make and machine other parts too like servo horns, motor mounts, landing gear. And now with this machine, I can kind of make almost everything, even electronics. So that's very cool. It's almost like this is the perfect companion to go along with 3D printing. I absolutely love and am addicted to 3D printing and the entire process, but now I have the perfect teammate. This CNC handles the strong stuff and the printers handle the flexible or fast stuff. If you love customizing and you're serious about the hobby, especially the hobby of RC, then this is absolutely worth the buy. The Makara Carvera Air is taking it to the next level and making CNC or your first steps into CNC easy without the scary learning curve. It does still have a bit of a learning curve. I would say, in fact, probably a little bit more than most of my 3D printers, but nothing that's so challenging that it can't be very quickly and easily learned. They have a ton of tutorial videos and instructions out there to help people jump into this. Now guys, this is just the tip of the iceberg. It has the ability to do some just amazing things. My very first cutout was this micro servo arm, two-dimensional, very kind of limited. Then I took it to the next level and I have depth cuts in here, which was really cool. Uh, we just did an easy, readily available, well, actually this was designed, but it was kind of easy to do. Um, little American flag there. And then one of their sample cuts was this very detailed uh, ship, almost, I don't know what you'd really call this, but man, it just shows off what that can do with a drill bit. That's a drill bit coming down and moving around in there and moving up and down in depths to get really smooth surfaces. I'm very impressed with that. But 
Remember, we still have, and I plan to do more with, the ability to do a fourth axis. So rather than just having a stationary piece of material down here and it's the bit is coming down and making cuts, now we can put a block of wood in here or something and it can rotate and we can get those bit cuts coming down, but the piece can be rotated. So we can get some really detailed uh, machining done with that. And it has the ability to take the bits out and then plug in our laser module and we can do some laser cutting on really thin stuff but also do some laser engraving so if nothing else we can i'm hoping to do some customizing of maybe your maybe an rc transmitter we can put the rc transmitter in there maybe on the back of it or something and just customize put your name or your nickname or how many how many crash planes you have under your belt or something I mean, there's a lot there's a lot we can do with this i think that's really the best way to describe this machine is the perfect companion to 3D printing for RC stuff. If you're the person that likes to customize and build and create and innovate and redesign or try to do something even better, then this is just the perfect, perfect teammate to go with all this other stuff too. There are safety features thought about with this too. I just now I uh, saw this and wanted to point it out, but it has, I have kids. And so something for me to think about, even though the kids are, are almost never down here in this space, especially unless we are with them. I love that this is fully enclosed. It's almost airtight because it's sucking up all those chips and things of, of stuff that it's cutting through the, through the vacuum. But uh, when that's closed, it's not a very easy, easy lift. It's held down with magnets and it's going to keep little fingers out of there if something were running but in case of an emergency there is an emergency stop button that's plugged in as well and i have that right there right up front so if anything were to happen then we can hit that button and stop the machine as well uh, i i think they've thought about really just about everything with this and i've been extremely impressed so far i'm so glad to have this in the rc shop alongside the 3d printers and it's really nice knowing that i have the ability now to make and create fix repair and build from the ground up a lot of rc things that i wouldn't have been able to do in the past with a lot of cool different materials that i would not have been able to do in the past so i want to say a massive thanks to god for blessing us with the time and ability to jump in front of the camera and share this experience with you guys let me know in the comments is this something that you would try to start with before a 3d printer would you do like me and get your first 3d printer first so you can kind of make things from the ground up and then this is a good companion machine or what could you see using this uh, in the world of RC to bring things to life. I've got a few more ideas that I'm excited to try out, especially when we start working with metal on this machine as well. And last, but certainly not least, I wanna say a massive thanks to our Patreon supporters because we couldn't do what we do as often as we do it without your insanely awesome support. This being the first CNC machine I've ever owned, we don't have any more content yet on this on the channel, but we do have a lot of 3D printer content. We'll have one of those videos handpicked popping up right about now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you there. Bye.